Excel releases an insane number of new features. In this video, I'm going to go through what's new in the semi-annual channel from this year, but also what is in the monthly enterprise channel, the current channel, and the beta channel. What features haven't been released in all the channels and are coming soon to all of them, and I'll explain what all that means. My name is David Nyman, and we have a lot to get through, so let's get started. We got the translate function to start off equals translate tab to lock that in. I just have the text like that. Source language, if I leave that blank, it's in square brackets, which means it's optional. Then it auto detects it. Target language, I'm going to write in speech marks FR. And you can see that it does filter the list as I keep typing it. Perfect. And that is what games is in French. And I can drag that down as need be. Love this function, use it all the time. If I do equals detect language, press tab to lock that in. I just have the text and it will give me EN for English. And if I double click to lock that in, it will keep giving me EN, but this one, it will give me FR. Now you've never been able to write numbers as text words, for example. At least you were able to in Thai with this very obscure function called bar text. For some reason, only ever existed in the Thai language. However, Combine that, of course, with the translate function and check this out. You can leave the other two blank. If you leave source blank, it auto detects. If you leave target blank, it defaults to the language of your computer settings. And look at that. I can drag it down and it gives me even up to the tens of thousands, negatives. And if you've got a point, it will do baht 20 satang. Now, what do these mean? Baht is the language of Thailand and satang is the sense. But if you use some other kind of substitute functions or you use text after, et cetera, then you can remove those words. I have another video where I talk about this and another video where I talk about translate as well. Next up, we have regex. And regex is this awesome phenomenon where you can do strange things with text patterns. So you can do things like replace every number with something else. So I'm going to do equals regex replace press tab to lock that in, and I have the text here. And then pattern, I'm going to do in speech marks, slash D, close speech marks. Replacement, I'm going to do just a zero like that. The other ones, I'm going to leave blank because that's not relevant for this. And you can see it's replaced every number with a zero. If there's three, it's replaced three of them like that, etc. Now, how do I know what the slash D is and other patterns. Well, you can look up regex. It's actually something that's existed in multiple programming languages for a long, long time. And there you go, there's D, which is what I used. But you've also got loads of other really, really complex things that can do various different actions based on certain text things that it detects. Or you can use ChatGBT or maybe Copilot. So here I'm going to say, write an Excel formula using regex to extract an email address from the cell G4, regardless of where in the sentence it is. All right. So it's given me this, which is obviously not a function. This is VBA code. But it says, note, Excel doesn't have a built-in regex extraction function by default. It does. It's just this is a bit out of date. But if you're using Google Sheets, you could simply use this. So this works in Google Sheets for ages. I'm going to copy it and use it in Excel. So here I'm going to extract the email address from this cell. Look at that. Regardless of where the email address is in the cell, it will take it. Now it does give me an NA if it doesn't find it, but you can use an if error to avoid that. Now, what about if I want to just test it? You also have regex test, and I'm going to test if there's a domain here, which is everything after the at symbol. This is the code. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to do equals regex test. And the text is this. The pattern is in quotations, quotations or speech marks, whatever you prefer using. Close your brackets and you get true or false. The other option was whether it's case sensitive or not. And there you go. This one is false, which is the one that gave me an error in this case. You can also use regex in XLOOKUP, the update of VLOOKUP. If I press comma, 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 comma in match mode, I can do regex match. So this allows you to search for these complex kind of patterns rather than just looking for the exact match. Also, X match has the same update equals X match, comma, comma, comma. Search mode is also regex match here. Now, if I update this, we can see the non-formula stuff. So link to this range, I can select some data and I can right click. This is new, link to this range. And now it's copied the link. If I paste that, the person who clicks it will be able to access the entire file, but get directed to that range. I can also right click on a worksheet and link to this sheet. 
Next, you have Python. This is a, another pretty huge update. So in the formulas tab, you have this whole section. So if I go to insert Python, I get these basics. Here's something you can't do with a regular Excel, something called a pair plot. So I'm going to insert a sample. I'm going to create a new worksheet here. And it's got the image. This is using the Seaborn library, which allows you to do much more complex data visualization stuff. In this thing, it looks at the correlation between various different things, and it also gives you a histogram where it's the same one that meets each other. However, how you get started is you go in a cell and you write equals PY tab. Now you get this, this is in green, and then you need to start with a data frame. So I'm gonna call this data frame. You give it the name equals, and then if you select the cells, it will use regular Excel language just to select things like that, perfect. Close my brackets, it does that automatically. You do need to press Control Enter to commit the Python code, as it tells you in the indication. Now I've got this in a data frame. I can choose here to actually see it not in a data frame, but the actual Excel value. And this will just be the entire table like that. And then I can use more code to write out what this is, but I'm not gonna go through this in this quick whistle stop tour of all the new features but there is so much cool stuff that you can do with Python. If you want to learn more, I have another video where I show how to make this plot and lots of other data visualizations that were previously impossible with Excel. Now, another thing has been added because of Python, which is in calculation options, you have partial. Partial means they will calculate Excel formulas normally, but it will not calculate Python code. So if I switch this, for example, there, I will see this with a strike through. There's also something that is new, that shows me it's stale, it's not the most up-to-date data. Now, if I was to do this completely manual, then my Excel formulas would show me the same thing. So now if I type in something new, or I press F2 and enter, now it will show me the strike through to show me that it's not calculated, and calculate now will get rid of that. Of course, I would never use manual, I would use automatic, unless I'm using Python, which will be partial. You also have forms. So in the insert tab, you have forms over here and new form. So it takes a little bit to load, but essentially this is a new entry point into Microsoft Forms. I found that not that exciting. I love Microsoft Forms, but I will just enter it through the web. But it has pre-written this worksheet with the ID, the start time, etc., of these things that are the default fields for Microsoft Forms. But again, I would probably start with Microsoft Forms. All right, so now we've come to the end of C and we've got some more stuff to cover. So current channel means that it has released them into production, but only for the people who have decided they want the features as soon as they come out. Monthly enterprise channel, these are the green ones. These are things that are released a couple of months after typically the current channel. And there's some other new stuff here, which is worth exploring. And just to note, if you're in the current channel, you will have all these green ones and all these purple ones as well, but you will not have the beta ones that we'll get to in a second. You've always been able to do equals this one multiplied by this one. I'm sure this is not very surprising to you and you can drag it down. But what about if you want to go below the data, you get these ugly zeros or with a lookup, you might get errors. Well, trim range aims to fix that. So you can do equals trim range and I can do this whole range, close my brackets, multiplied by trim range again, and all of this. And now it will give me only the results in there until I have some values in here and here. And that will keep expanding in the same way, but not with the ugly zeros. Now, if you don't want to write both trim range functions, you can also do this with a special notation. So I can do equals all of this multiplied by all of this. I'm going to do something special. I'm going to go after the two dots and do a, a single dot like this, a period. And that will have the same effect. And again, if I add something here and here, it will give me the same effect, but I don't have to use that long function. You can also add a dot before the colon, but that will kind of expand it to the top, which is something that is less useful. I have another video where I cover these in more detail, as do I for most of these things. Now, another awesome new function is equals group by. Now this essentially replaces what pivot tables were used for before. So I can select family for my row fields, comma, my value field will be units, need to end at the same place. And then my function is going to be a sum, close my brackets, and I have basically a pivot table. Now, if you see the optional ones, field headers, I usually do yes and show, 
and then total depth, you can choose what you want. I'm going to do no totals as well. Sort order, filter array, and the other one is very obscure. There you go. So much nicer. You also have the ability to do new types of functions. So equals group by, I can have row fields to be the family, comma, and values. I'm actually going to do the text value here. Comma and function, I'm going to do array to text. You can't do this within pivot tables. Field headers, I always do yes and show, which is three. Double click that, close, and there you go. It will show me in text values with a comma separated list all the ones that are in each family, which is pretty cool. You also have equals pivot by. Pivot by is if you want to do a similar kind of pivot table, but with two dimensions, rows and columns. So I can do, for example, animal here. I'm going to do a comma, get my column fields to be the games here from right at the beginning, comma, and then my values are going to be this unit again. My function, I can do percent of, and then I can close my brackets because the others are optional. And there you go. It's giving me now the percent of. Control shift five, control shift percent will show you these are the percentage of the column, but you can switch that with the various different options in there. No, you also have equals percent of is actually its own standalone function, but I don't use that very much. It's just built in because it is included within the others. So that's really useful. I have another few videos where I talk about this because there's a lot to know about these awesome new functions and how they can replace pivot tables. All right, let's look at some other new stuff. Check performance. So in the review tab, you have check performance here, and this will scan your workbook where you have alignment or any formatting that is not inside your data and it might bloat your file. So for example, if I was to go after my data and select some stuff and make it a color, check again, we'll now pick this up as something that is not needed. But if you have a bloated file, you can click on optimize all and it will just make everything much nicer. Focus cell in the view tab, you can just click on this and you'll see immediately what it does. And you can also change the color. And auto highlight, this means that it comes out if you use find and replace. Filter comments. So if I was to leave a comment like this, and now if I go to review and I choose show comments, I get this filter icon where I can filter stuff that is just mentioning me, active or resolved. In fact, if I mark this as resolved, then filter for active will not show it. Check boxes. So I'm going to take off this view. I find it a little bit confusing. So if I select this and I go to insert tab, I have checkboxes. Really useful, does what the name suggests. You can multi-select and press space. And they evaluate to true if they're ticked and false if they're not. You can do more advanced stuff with them, but I have another video on that as well. Navigation pane. In the view tab, you can click on here. And then there you go. Just a list of all of your worksheets, the form that we made, the Python sample. And that gives me the prompt to rename these. So I'm going to delete these and there you go. They've gone away. And here, if I rename it to be data, it does rename there. And it also has underneath anything that is a selected bit of data or an object or a picture, etc. It would show it to you like this. Going into S territory, semi-annual channel. So if you go to the insert tab, you have pictures and place and cell. This is brand new and I can go to stock images. I'm going to search for animal. There you go. I've got first an elephant, then a panda. And then let's just search for a penguin, be a bit more specific. There we go. I'm just going to insert these three. Perfect, which is pretty cool. And you can keep going if you want to. By the way, these will appear in things like lookups. So if I click on this and equals X lookup. XLOOKUP is much better than VLOOKUP, comma, look up in this array, return in this array, close my brackets, and I get the number. Also works in pivot tables, some ifs, other things. So if we add some filters, control shift L will do that. Then I can see essentially the old text. If you set the old text, we'll show you there. You can also click on that to pop it between a pop-up floating object and the other one. And I can click here to put it into the top leftmost cell where it is there as well. 
If you right click, you have picture and cell options here. So place over cells is the same that I just did. Create reference, we'll do something in the middle. It will keep both of them essentially, and this is referred to that one. So if I was to replace this, it will <laughs> give me an error like that. And you also have show preview. I don't really see the point of this. <laughs> they will also work in pivot tables as well. Other semi-annual things. So get data from the web with AI. So here you go. If I go to Rotten Tomatoes and see what movies are in theaters, I can see it like this. As you will notice, this is not in a table. So if I want to extract this data, it's not going to be particularly easy to do it. But now Excel's Power Query uses AI to allow that. So I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to go back to my Excel and I'm going to go to data, get data from web. And here I'm going to paste. Okay. Take some time to load, but I do get this. Look at that, it's put them in tables for me. Or if I wanna do my own thing, I can click on add table using examples. It shows you the sample here. It doesn't always come out the neatest, but if I type in Klezmer project, this one, enter, it will then give me the names of all the other ones and it will guess that so this could be movie title, for example, and then I can press plus and let's do this one 100%. It's a pretty good movie, yes. And yeah, some of these are blank because they are blank in here. My dead friend's Zoe 100%, Riff Raff 75%. Perfect, it's got it like that. This is going to be score. You can add things like dates, etc. Press OK. And then transform data are loaded directly to the worksheet. There it is loaded. Again, another video will talk you through that in much more detail. Another thing that is new in the insert tab, and this is not just in Excel, but also in PowerPoint, Outlook, and Word in pictures, you have mobile device. This allows you to pair up an Android device and get photos directly from that into your Excel, PowerPoint, Word, Outlook. All of those are supported with this. It hasn't loaded it, but that's how it would work. Anyway, all right, beta channel. So a few things, firstly, you have a lot more DAX functions. So it has updated to the newer versions of DAX. So things like selected value, selected measure, which were in Power BI for a number of years have now been included in Excel, but only in the beta channel. You have catch up over here. So if you are co-authoring and someone has done some changes, it will pop up here that you can see what they've done. Better recommended pivot tables. So if I was to select this, I can go to insert and recommended pivot tables. This is a new engine that uses AI rather than what it did before. Well, it hasn't given me the best suggestions here. <laughs> and then you have dark mode. So you have to do two things to make dark mode work. You have to go to file and then account. And then here you have to choose office theme to be black. And then if you go to the view tab, you will see switch modes here. If you didn't do that, the switch modes just disappears. So if I go back to file and account and I choose colorful, which is usually what I have in the view tab now, it's gotten rid of that. I can't see switch modes. You also have toggle formula compatibility. So in the formulas tab, calculation options, you have this one. This is because Excel is kind of doing at the moment, very small changes to a few functions. And if you want to work on the same spreadsheet as someone who is using an old version, you can change between latest which is the newest version and recommended which is compatible with other ones but that will become more important as time goes on now if you're wondering what these versions actually mean beta current etc if you go to file and account you'll see here which one you're on i'm on the beta channel that means i get the features released before they're actually generally released and they're much more likely to be buggy etc but i get to play with the new toys if you see current channel that's the first time it gets released into production and then monthly enterprise channel will release a couple of months after that. And then semi-annual channel, as the name implies, will release twice a year in January and in July. Always make sure you're up to date by going to update options and update now. If you're using an older version of Excel, like Excel 2024, 21, 19, 16, etc., then you won't get the new features from this year, as the name implies. And also, I haven't covered Copilot stuff in this video because it has a different licensing. And I have other videos on that. So I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is David and I'm and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. I love talking about tech and I love talking about the new stuff. Thanks for watching.